<clears throat> Shalom. Kahala Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakudash. Yahweh is the Heavenly Father's name, who the world in ignorantly calls God. Bahashem means in the name of Yahweh Shai, is the one that you're looking at right now, who is the only begotten Son of Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Jehovah, Yeshua, and so on and so forth. And I want to say double honors to the elders, apostles, and prophets of Great Millstone that have taught the true and full doctrine of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. And first and foremost, I want to thank. The Lord Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai for putting the spirit upon those great men to bring out the the true doctrine of the scriptures because right now there are many camps that are known as false prophets that are doing nothing but confusing that are confusing a lot of people right now man and at the end of the day that's prophecy that's prophecy being fulfilled because the scriptures say that there were going to be false prophets coming and speaking blasphemy of the Lord. Speaking about not Salaki. Not praising the Heavenly Father's Son, Yahweh Shai. And just speaking folly. But the scriptures talk about what the fate is of those, of the, the false prophets. Pursuing the Matthew chapter 7. Verse. Uh, I'll start at verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many of these false prophets aren't doing the will of the Heavenly Father. Instead of going to Yahweh Shai, which is the mediator, to speak to the Heavenly Father Yahweh, they think they can go right ahead and speak to, to the Lord Yahweh, but that's not how this is. Scriptures clearly tell you that. First Timothy chapter 2 verse, fi verse 5 For there is one God and one mediator between the Heavenly Father and men, the man Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Point blank period. Can't get around it, man. The Messiah, Yahweh Shai, came here for one purpose and one purpose only, which is to shed his blood so that he can be a mod a mediator, like the scriptures say, so that we can so that our prayers can get to the Heavenly Father. But these people think they can just avoid what the scriptures say and just be a bunch of jakes man but it's not how these things work but nonetheless like you, the title of this lesson is thus with great violence and what is that implying thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be destroyed pursuing to Revelation chapter 18 verse 21 And it reads, And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. <clears throat> and that's the that's the fruits of this this evil kingdom's labor, man. Because since the day that they've been in rulership They've done nothing but exceedingly polluted the whole earth with their wickedness. Because who's in charge of this world? 
the wicked. And who are the wicked? Well, we're about to find out. <laughs> this is Job chapter 9 verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? And right now, who is in charge of everything? The Edomites. So-called Americans. And to further back up that point, let's go to Malachi chapter 1, verse 2. I have loved you, saith the Lord. And that you is referencing the nation of Israel. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and hated Esau, and laid his mountain and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. And that's what these heathen, Salaki, that's what Esau has done. During the Renaissance era, they've done nothing but blasphemize the true doctrine of the Heavenly Father and the nation of Israel, so that our people can't come back to their true nationality and know who their true power is, which is Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> and to further bring out this point, Romans chapter 9, verse 21. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and, un and another unto dishonor? The one made for honor is the twelve tribes of Israel, because the Lord made a dis he distinguished the nation of Israel from the heathen nations by giving us the law, statutes, and commandments. Matter of fact, let's get that. It's Deuteronomy chapter. We'll start here. Deuteronomy chapter fourteen, verse two. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. So the Lord chose us, because he made a covenant with our forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the Lord isn't a man to lie. And he doesn't make little promises like that and lie about them. The Lord is a just power. <clears throat> so there's a difference between us and the other nations, brothers. <clears throat> and this, but back onto the the topic, thus with great violence. And how will this great whore be smitten down? Let's go to Revelations chapter seventeen, verse. Let's see. Oops. I'll start at verse 14. These shall make war with the Lamb. And who is that Lamb? Yahweh Shai. And the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And those that are called are the elect of the nation of Israel. Because the nation of Israel is the only nation that is going to gain salvation in the time of Jacob's trouble. Verse 15, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, and who is that whore? The daughter of Babylon, the great city, America, where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues, because this nation has has taken dominion of everything <clears throat> and that can be seen throughout the scriptures in the book of Daniels and in many other scriptures regarding this great whore verse 16 and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast and those ten horns which some of you brothers un understand and know is the EU the European Union 
which are the main countries that are flourishing right now that have those 10 crowns upon them because they've been in a good case and have created uh, a community so that they can bring this great horror into a desolation and why have they done that because the heavenly father put the spirit upon them to do so because everything doesn't come to pass by the interpretation of man everything happens for a purpose for the heavenly father's purpose and the ten horns were sixteen and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire let's read that again these shall hate the whore who the European Union the air which was first known as the European Economic Community EEU or EEC and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire and what is that fire talking about the nuclear missiles that are going to come down on the face of the earth and destroy it because what let's get that because second Ezra chapter 15 verse 6 for wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled because since the time that these heathen nations mainly Esau were given power over the land they've done nothing but shed the blood of Israel and the only way to cleanse that this land is by shedding their blood which can be seen in Numbers chapter 35 verse 33 so ye sh slock you so ye shall not pollute the land wherein you are for blood it defileth the land and what have these people done to our to the nation of Israel they have shed our blood on our land and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein but by the blood of him that shed it that's the only way we're gonna be that's the only way this world is gonna be cleansed thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be destroyed and not only Babylon but these other nations as well let's go back to that verse 17 actually slack yeah there's some there's a lot of meat off this bone brother so just bear with me and the scriptures tell us that the Lord isn't isn't gonna come and meet these heathen nations and Esau as a man but let's see what um, let's see who that is I don't Isaiah chapter 47 verse 3 thy nakedness shall be uncovered which is what Revelation chapter 17 verse 16 was talking about yea thy shame shall be seen I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man because the Lord is gonna come with those chariots man which is which can be seen throughout the throughout the whole the whole book that the Heavenly Father has given us and this is one of the examples Zechariah chapter 6 in the first verse and I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked up behold and behold there came four chariots out from between two mountains and the mountains were mountains of brass look at that man that's what this great horror has waiting for her. <clears throat> Nothing but violence, Lucky. And the Lord isn't going to come here and meet, like it said, Isaiah chapter 47, verse 3. The Lord isn't here to meet them 
as a man but in those in the chariots but first those nuclear missiles have to come to pass which is what Isaiah chapter 9 verse 5 speaks on for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood which is how many wars were fought in the past during the time of David during the time of Abraham and so on and so forth but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire and how is that going to take place by those nuclear missiles that the Heavenly Father has put the spirit upon these heathen nations to create which can be seen in the book of Revelation chapter 6 verse 12 and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair Osaka, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and how is that going to take place with the nuclear destruction that these nuclear missiles are going to bring man it's going to be so catastrophic that the sun is going to be blackened and the moon is going to be turned into blood red. Verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, and even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And I believe so that's talking about the the power that these that Esau has. <clears throat> Verse 14. And the heathen departed as a scroll when Slakia, not the Slakia. Let me read that again. Verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And that is referring to the image of when these nuclear missiles are going to take place. And still to this day, no one has seen the amount of destruction a nuclear missile can bring forth. All we've seen are these atomic bombs that Esau has created and has put to the test on on the on the Chinese which can be seen as these atomic bombs. Look at that. Like it said, as a scroll a scroll when it is rolled together and these nuclear missiles are 10 times stronger or more so that's gonna be 10 times bigger than that man and these these heathen nations and Esau they understand that this is gonna take place which is what the scriptures are going to explain further down verse 15 and the kings of the earth the people that have power over these countries and the people and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and what is that referring to to these dumbs the deep underground military bases that these heathen nations have been creating And, man, it's crazy that these scriptures talk about this, brothers. Because these, these books have been written many, many years before. John is speaking about this all through visions, Lord, brothers. And now, through the grace of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh He put the Spirit upon our four Salaki, our elders, apostles, and prophets. Mainly the elder apostles of GMS to bring this under the earth and to show us reading on down and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb who's sitting on the throne Yahweh who is that ra who is that lamb Yahweh Shai who's going to bring destruction under this earth because once <clears throat> once these nuclear missiles have fallen Yahweh is it to come 
and he's gonna bring more wrath onto these heathen nations this isn't a joke brothers verse 17 for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand no one no one is going to be able to put up with the amount of woe that our our heavenly father Yahweh and his only begotten son Yahweh Shai are going to bring it's going to be a day like no other <clears throat> Back to Revelation chapter 17. Um, we'll read the 16th chapter again. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the earth, Slaki, which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, which are the European Union, hating America, which is this great whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. And that fire, like we just read in Revelation, the 6th chapter and the 12th verse. So it's nuclear missiles. For the Heavenly Father hath put in their hearts to fulfill His will. So all this that these see the nations and the daughter of Babylon are putting forth, it's not from their interpretation. The Heavenly Father, through His angels, put the Spirit upon them to make these, to make this nuclear catastrophe that's going to take place very soon for the heavenly father put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and gave their kingdom unto the beasts unto the words of the unto the words of the heavenly father shall be fulfilled and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth point blank period <clears throat> that's what these heathen nations have to not only these heathen nations mainly the daughter of Babylon America the Great have to expect in the very f near future because us brothers that have the spiritual lenses that we seeing the signs in the heaven and the earth pursuing to the book of Matthew the book of Mark the book of Luke and so on and so forth we see the many signs in the heaven and the earth signifying that the day of Yahweh Baha Shimi Hawashai's comeback is very nigh at hand. And the only way for us to get prepared for that day is by taking heed to what the scriptures say. So we're we're nigh at hand at this day, brothers, and we have to get prepared. And how are we gonna get prepared? By taking heed to the scriptures. I'll close with two two more scriptures and that'll be the lesson. Romans chapter 15 verse 4 For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So through the scriptures we are able to comfort ourselves and understand that all this has to come to pass for us to be in the heavenly kingdom. And that's what all of us Akim and the very few Akwav of the hopeful elect are waiting for. The kingdom of heaven where everything is going to be in order. Where we can keep the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, and finally be in order and be on top of these heathen nations and judging them. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 6 And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. And that's all we have to do, brothers. We got to continue to have patience and wait. And continue to look for the signs in the heaven and the earth. So we're not caught as a thief in the night. So like you said, that we're not caught in the night by that thief. <clears throat> so with that said. Kahala Yahweh. Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders, apostles of Great Millstone that have taught me the whole true doctrine of the scriptures. Salutations to the hopeful members of the elect.
Shalom.